Welcome to this video on Chemistry 1.5 for the AQA GCSE. This video covers the topic Other Useful Substances from Crude Oil. Just to start with here on the screen then, you see a bit of a summary of everything that this video is going to go through. So all of the information that you see on the screen there is what this video will cover. To start with then, we need to just recap the previous topic. And the previous topic was all about fractional distillation of crude oil. And the picture here on the left-hand side of the screen shows um, a fractional distillation column where a mixture of crude oil is placed into the bottom of the column and then heated up. And when it's heated up, different fuels condense at different temperatures or fractions. The big, long, large molecules condense at the bottom, and then the smaller molecules condense at the top. Each of these fuels are made up of hydrocarbons, and hopefully you'll remember that a hydrocarbon is a molecule that contains hydrogen and carbon atoms. Here on the screen, you'll see an example of a hydrocarbon, and it's called decane. And it's called decane because it's got 10 carbon atoms all across the chain. Now the thing with decane and lots of other long-chained hydrocarbons is that they're actually not that useful. So what people like to do in industry is make these long-chained carbon molecules and break them down. Break them down into something that's far more useful. And they do this by a process called cracking. Now you should see on the screen here that we've got our long chain decane molecule, which has got 10 carbon atoms in, and it's been broken down into three smaller hydrocarbons. The first of which is pentane, then propene, then ethene. And the way that you can do this is you need to heat it up to 800 degrees Celsius and you need a catalyst to speed up the reaction. Or, alternatively, you can mix it with steam. This type of reaction is called a thermal decomposition reaction, which we've heard about before. It involves something breaking down using heat, so it's a thermally decomposing. And the cracking reaction, or this cracking process, produces smaller, much more useful molecules, which can be used for fuels. So the whole point of cracking, the aim of cracking, is to generate smaller molecules, which are more useful than the longer chained hydrocarbons. Make sure you remember the conditions for this reaction, because they're really important. On the screen now then, you'll see two examples of alkene molecules. And alkene molecules are any molecules with carbon, hydrogen and double bonds. So ethene, on the left hand side, has got two carbons and it's got a double bond here represented by two double lines. And then the one on the right hand side of the screen is propene because it's got three carbons. If you look carefully, you'll see this carbon up here, then this one, then this one. And what we say is that there's a general alkene formula, which you need to know. And that formula is CnH2n, where n is the number of carbons. So if you've got a carbon molecule, which has got two carbons in, like ethene here, the general formula would be C2H4, because I've done the sum 2 times the number of carbons, which is two, so I've got four. For propene, it would be C3H6, because I've done two times three is six. And you can see up here, I've got three hydrogens there, four, five, six, just to prove it. The next thing that you need to know is the test for alkenes. And what we say for molecules um, 
like alkenes, anything with double bonds in, carbon-carbon double bonds, we can call them unsaturated molecules. The picture here shows an alkane, which has only got single bonds in, and an alkene, which, as we know, has got double bonds in. The test for alkenes is to add bromine water, which is normally an orange-brown colour. If you add bromine water to an alkane, which has only got the single carbon bonds in, it turns orange or brown, the same colour as the bromine water. But if you add the bromine water to an alkene, the alkene reacts with the bromine and it decolorizes it. It goes colourless. So if you are asked what is the test to prove that you've got an alkene or an unsaturated hydrocarbon, what you would say is you add bromine water and if it goes colourless or if it decolorizes, you've got an alkene. The next process that you need to know about is one called polymerization, or making polymers. On the screen now you've got an example of what we call a monomer, which is a single unit. Mono means one, and poly means many. To make a polymer, what we need to do is join up lots and lots of monomer molecules. So you can see here that you've got one monomer, two monomers, three monomers, and it can go up to hundreds of thousands of monomers joined together to make one big long chained polymer. Examples of polymers include this one on the screen here now, which is where lots of ethene molecules, which hopefully we can recognize now for our two carbons with a double bond and four hydrogens, when they all join together, you form the big long chain polyethene. Another example of polymerization is where three propene monomers, or many propene monomers, join together to form a big long chain. Notice the change of name here, rather than polyethene, this one is polypropene, because it's got that extra carbon for each monomer unit. For the exam, you need to be able to spot which monomer has been used to make the polymer. So if you were given this picture, for example, in the test, what you should be able to do is find out what monomer makes up this big long chain. And the way to do it is to try and spot the pattern. So if you break the chain up, hopefully you can see that there are one, two, three repeating units in this polymer. And if you were to remove this bond and this bond and form a new double bond there by breaking it down, what you'd actually end up with is one propene molecule. The other thing that you need to know about this topic is how you can write these big long chain polymers in shorthand. And the way that we do it is by drawing brackets around each monomer unit and putting the number n where n represents any large number. So you could have n equals 100 where you've got 100 monomers joined together to form one big polymer chain. Another example at the bottom here is where we've got vinyl chloride monomers, where we've still got our double bond, but this time we've got a chlorine atom on it instead of a CH3 group or a normal hydrogen atom, like we'd see in polyethene. Now, if you join these two monomers together and a lot more of these monomers, you can make a big, long polymer chain. And we can represent it like this, where the double bond has been lost because you've connected it to 
other monomer units and the chlorine atom points upwards and you've got your letter N there to represent your large number. This polymer is called PVC or polyvinyl chloride and it's a plastic which can be used for things like windows and door frames. You need to know some uses of some polymers and there's lots and lots of useful applications and uses of these polymers, this polymer science. For example, there's new packaging materials which have been developed, waterproof coatings for fabrics, dental polymers, wound dressings, hydrogels and smart materials, including what we call shape memory polymers, which um, are polymers which can remember the shapes that they were initially made into. The problems though, is that quite a lot of polymers aren't biodegradable. So they're not broken down by microbes, which can lead to lots of problems with waste disposal. So things like plastic bags, which are made out of polymers, if they go to landfill, they're not broken down easily, and that can cause many environmental problems. But there are new types of polymers which are being used to make plastic bags at the moment, um, which involve the use of cornstarch. And if you use cornstarch in plastic bags, then these make biodegradable plastics which can break down a lot more easily and have environmental um, less impact on the environment.